All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got Jordan Peterson back in the building, taking on an atheist by the name of Sam Harris, who's also a philosopher and neuroscientist. So I'm sure this is going to be a doozy. I didn't know who Sam Harris was before this. I will, after all, said and done. But stay till the end if you want to hear my input and perspective. Let's get it poppin'. You say you believe in God. You have been... No, I say I act as if he exists. You say what? I say I act as if he exists, okay. which so, is a much more precise claim. Okay, so, so then what, what, but in this case, what, so you act as though God exists, yep. and in addition, I've heard you say that I act as though God exists, that I'm, I can't really well, be so an atheist. Well, so far, it seems yeah, that. Right, yeah. <laughs> we'll the, see. The, the night is young. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 so, in that sense, I'm not really an atheist. I've, I've heard you say this. So that, it, it, well, some of you is. Well, in, if I were really an atheist, I would be far more poorly behaved than, in fact, I am. Right? I would be like Raskolnikov committing murders and, and assuming there was nothing it wrong with more, it. Yeah. It would be more likely, yes. Yeah, okay. So, so Wait, that's a big distinction. That I need, would yeah, versus I need to know. would be more likely. What was that? It's a big distinction that you would is very different than it would be more likely. Taking the safety off the gun is not the same thing as shooting it, right? Yeah. The so, temptations laid open to Raskolnikov would be more at hand. Okay. Just as they were to him. So, what in that, so in, in what sense do you mean, what, what is the God that you act as though he, she, it exists? And what is the, what, what is the God-shaped thing I must have in my life to prevent me from being a, quote, real atheist? Well, okay, first of all, I have to point out that there's no possible way I can answer both those questions in two minutes. Well, it's the, it's, it's the same question. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, what, is, okay. it, like, what, what do you mean by God? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you some of the things that I mean by God. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, we, we do have to get the question. Maybe we're going to do this tomorrow. Yeah, maybe this is where uh-huh. we, we start. Oh, God. Well, that was a pretty resounding well, maybe that's no. A, it so. seems like that constitutes an audience question, wouldn't you say? All right, I tell you what, I tell you what. Let's, yeah. um, let's do this, but let's be deliberate about time. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read some things that I wrote because it's so complicated that I'm not sure that I can just spin it off the top of my head, and so you'll have to excuse me. So, and what I'm going to do is sort of paint a picture by, by, by highlighting different things. So now I already made one point here. I, m- I made the point that part of the conception of God that underlies the Western ethos is the notion that whatever God is is expressed in tr- the truthful speech that rectifies pathological hierarchies. And that isn't all it does. It also confronts the chaos of being itself and generates habitable order. That's, a, that's the metaphysical proposition. And that that's best conceptualized as at least one element of God. And so I would think about it as a transcendent reality that's only observable across the longest of time frames, the longest of iterated time frames, to your point. So, so okay, so here's, here's some propositions. And they're complicated, and they need to be unpacked. So I'm just going to read them, and you're, that'll have to do for the time being. So, God is how we imaginatively and collectively represent the existence and action of consciousness across time. As the most real aspects of existence manifest themselves across the longest of time frames, but are not necessarily apprehensible as objects in the here and now. So what that means in some sense is that you have conceptions of reality built into your biological and metaphysical structure that are a consequence of processes of evolution that that occurred over unbelievably vast expanses of time and that structure your perception of reality in ways that it wouldn't be structured if you only lived for the amount of time that you're going to live. And that's also part of the problem of deriving values from facts because you're evanescent and and you can't derive the right values from the facts that portray themselves to you in your lifespan, which is why you have a biological structure that's like 3.5 billion years old. So, God is that which eternally dies and is reborn in the pursuit of higher being and truth. That's a fundamental element of hero mythology. God is the highest value in the hierarchy of values. That's another way of looking at it. God is what calls and what responds in the eternal call to adventure. God is the voice of conscience. God is the source of judgment and mercy and guilt. 
God is the future to which we make sacrifices and something akin to the transcendental repository of reputation. Here's a cool one if you're an evolutionary biologist. God, <laughs> God, God is that which selects among men in the eternal hierarchy of men. So, you know, men arrange themselves into hierarchies and then men rise in the hierarchy. And there's principles that are important that determine the probability of their rise. And those principles aren't tyrannical power. They're something like the ability to articulate truth and the ability to be competent and the ability to make appropriate moral judgments. And if you can do that in a given situation, then all the other men will vote you up the hierarchy, so to speak, and that will radically increase your reproductive fitness. And the operation of that process across long expanses of time looks to me like it's codified in something like the notion of God the Father. It's also the same thing that makes women, men attractive to women because men, women peel off the top of the male hierarchy. And the question is, what should be at the top of the hierarchy? And the answer right now is tyranny as part of the patriarchy, but the real answer is something more like the ability to use truthful speech in the service of, let's say, well-being. And so that's, that's something that operates across tremendous expanses of time, and it plays a role in the selection for survival itself, which makes it a fundamental reality. Jordan, if so, I can I just cut in here with one question. Uh, Stop with that for now. What? So I, I was not hearing in that list of attributes a God who could care if anyone masturbated. Uh, I was not hearing a God who... Depends on what else is stopping you from doing, Sam. Uh, well, I, I'm sorry, I missed that. Wait, wait, wait. I said it depends on what else it's stopping you from doing. Well, okay, so it's, it's yeah, important but to live. But seriously. It's, it's important to do something other than masturbate. Yes. Uh, yes, which, is, which, which actually yeah. constitutes a problem yeah, which is, for many which, people. Which is harder than it sounds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not hearing a, a, a God, a personal God, who can possibly hear anyone's prayers, much less answer them. Right, and um, so I'm just I'm wondering what percentage of religious people who who would say, "Oh yeah, I believe in God, and it's the most important thing in my life." Uh, what percentage of those religious people do you think have in mind a God of the sort you just described? I don't and, know, Sam. It's a good question because when I go talk to people, when I when I talk to people online and use exactly this terminology, millions of people listen. So it's not so yeah. obvious well, which what percentage of no, people see it this way. It's, it may can, be that they have the intuitions, but they haven't been articulated well. I mean, this is, this is the problem. Uh, this is what worries me about this. So, you, I mean, you, you, you could do the same thing with the idea of, a, of ghosts, right? So, so people traditionally have believed in ghosts. It's, a, it's an archetype, you might say, the ghost. Survival of death is certainly an archetype. And, and we know what most people most of the time mean when they say they believe in ghosts. And I say, I don't believe in ghosts. And you say, no, no, you, you do believe in ghosts. Ghosts are your relationship to the unseen. That's a ghost. So you, you have a, a, a new definition of ghost that you're putting in, in the place provided which I have to say, well, of course I have a relationship to the unseen, so uh, yeah, I guess I do believe in ghosts. You know, you win that argument. Uh, but that simply isn't what most people mean by a ghost. Most yeah, people mean- Yeah, but you mean, can't use that simplified argument about my conception but, but, of ghosts as an analogy for the propositions the, the, that I just put forward. This is what I see you do. I mean, maybe you have more to say on the topic of God, but this is what I hear you doing with God. You have defined the God that most people believe in, and we know this is the God that most people believe in. I was in. asked what God I believed in. Not yes, what no, most but I'm, a, I'm asking in. you what percentage, yes, but you, you by shifting the, the definition, you have robbed the, the noun, the traditional noun of its traditional meaning, and you're giving, you're imparting to people hey, a wait sense. A se wait a second, wait, wait a wait. second, people. I, I'm not so what sure What do you mean this? by traditional meaning? Look, it's one of the one of the elemental claims in the Old Testament is that you're not even supposed to utter the name of God because by defining it too tightly, you lose its essence. And so let's not be talking about what the classical definition of God is here, okay? It's a but, historical non-starter. Okay, the, and there's plenty of religions on. that can make I, can it... Can I check in with the but, audience? And again, ah. back to my fundamental concern here in, in the difference with respect to the difference with how we talk about these things. 
to call that thing God is fine. That's a God I have no problem with, right? But that's not how most people most of the time are using the word. And there's something misleading about that. And that's, that worries me. Yeah, well, if, if the claim, if, if the claim that you're making is that we're all deeply confused about the nature of divinity and ultimate reality, it's like, yeah, yes, yeah, well, clearly. Well, uh, another I mean, thing so we agree I, on. I also don't disagree with, I don't disagree. Look, I've never said, I've never made the claim that what I'm talking about is like what other people are talking about. I mean, it is in some ways, but I've not made that claim, so I don't see why that's a justifiable criticism. It's like... Well, no, I, I, it's, a, it's a criticism because, in the, oh, oh. with respect to the very likely effects of communicating in that way. Because I, I see the results of that communication. It's a little bit... I mean, this is going to sound more invidious than it is, but this yeah. is the kind of thing that I get into with Deepak Chopra. Yeah. De Deepak and I agree about a lot. I think it's more invidious than it sounds, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're, you're not wearing rhinestone glasses. If you, if you graduate to that, we'll have more of a problem. Uh, but it's, D Deepak clearly wants to let his audience believe that everything they're into is on some level justifiable by his reading of quantum spookiness, right? Yep. So, it's all, so, you know, if, if, if you want to go out and just buy a lot of crystals and think they're going to heal you, it has something to do with the that, quantum, that sounds quantum nature of reality. That absolutely nothing like me. No, no, but, I'm, but I, I think Deepak could say, if, if, I, if I got his back to the wall, yeah. Deepak could say, honestly say, listen, I've never said anything about crystals. Right? I'm not selling crystals, I've never said they work, but it's, it's the way in which he's failing to make the clear differentiation. The, fa the, the fact that it takes you 20 minutes to admit that, there, that s a lot of the Bible is filled with barbaric nonsense. I don't like, think it took me 20 minutes to admit yeah, that. Well, I'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll go well, to the these, tape these, on that. This, these things yeah. matter, these things yeah. matter. And I'm just saying, it's like you, own Look, it. If, if you're if, saying if, that if, there's if you, a danger, if you're, if you're in a parish of one, yeah. or in a parish of one thousand, or a parish of a hundred thousand, but not in the parish that has anything in common with the with the Bible thumpers in my country who think that Jesus is very likely coming back in their lifetime because he never died, and he's going to judge the living and the dead, and there will be a resurrection and hellfire and all the rest. If that's not the game you're playing at all. Own it. Why? Why are you? Why are you? Why are you all applauding about that? It's like, what? What do you mean, own it? It's like I already made my claim. It's like I'm not playing a religious fundamentalist game. So what's all the applause about? So I don't understand that. And own it. It's like I was as listen. I was as clear as I possibly could be. When I delineated my answer to the question, people say, well, what do you mean by God? So, someone like, once, someone once one, asked you if Jesus you was resurrected. You want a one-second answer? But no. Well, forget it, man. So Jordan, Jordan, I think Jordan can, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. I think we can actually... This is a what, complicated what, what, One problem. second. No, yeah. I, mean, I don't want to end on a, I don't want to end on a note of acrimony, but what? someone once asked you whether you thought Jesus was literally resurrected, and you said it would take me 40 hours to answer that question. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the kind of thing I'm responding to here. You don't need to do that if you have a clear-cut answer to that question. And I don't you, have a clear-cut answer and to if that you question. Don't, and if you don't, that, that connects with many other things that we still have to talk about. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I definitely. Mean, because, because that... It and, isn't and, and, obvious in the biblical account that Christ was literally resurrected. So it's well, not simple. This no, is not no, no, simple. No, it, no, but if the question is, do you think... He, well, let's, let's put it probabilistically. I mean, anything's possible. I'll tell you that it's possible that he was physically resurrected. I mean, it's, it's not, it's even possible. But wait a second, I didn't With respect say to quantum mechanics. Was. The point is. If, I said it, it would take me 40 hours to answer the question. I didn't say that he was. Well, okay, well, how's this for an answer? Almost certainly not. Okay. What's, what's, what's wrong with that answer? You want. I, I, think I, I think I know what's wrong with that answer. Um, 
it's it's a it's a fine answer, and people have been giving that answer for a very long period of time. But the idea doesn't seem to go away. I'm going to get straight to it because just like these two gentlemen got straight to the point, they answered the questions thoroughly. They didn't beat around the bush like politicians do. I like that they they gave their take on it, but Jordan isn't God. Sam isn't God. You or I aren't God. So you can't put into context what God is. You can't put into context why everything is what it is, but it just amazes me. And again, this is my opinion. You can disagree. We can have a, a civil discussion in the comment section, or you can go crazy, go wild like most of society does nowadays when somebody has a opposing belief. But it just amazes me that that people still think we're here by random chance. Like that would be the ultimate magician's trick. And it falls right in line with us having absolutely no purpose and no grounds for anything being right versus wrong. It just, it, it baffles my mind because we have all these laws in place. We have this moral standard and how can there be any sort of moral standard if we just evolve from salt water or whatever the latest theory outside of God almighty actually is nowadays. You can really put it into these three questions. Like, do you believe in DNA? Most people would say, yes. Do you believe that DNA is a code? Most people would also say yes. So don't codes have to have a writer or a creator? Obviously, people would say, duh, absolutely. And I think that the debate ends right there because everything you see all around you, this hat, this shirt, the cup, headphones, like anything you want to try to uh, break down and decipher had a creator. So why couldn't there be a almighty power that created everything? That's who we refer to as God. Like it just it. it I'm flabbergasted that people can't comprehend that and they want to latch on to these false ideologies and people don't want to face God the same way a thief doesn't want to run straight to a police officer. They don't want to have to have parameters. They don't want to have to have boundaries and know that they're not in control of everything. And if they they go outside those parameters, there's consequences for that. Most people don't want accountability. Most people just want to run wild, be their own God. They want to that changes by the day and, and they think truth is relative. It, it, that's why people don't want to believe in God. And that's why people don't want to walk as though there is a God. It's one thing to say you believe in God, but it's a whole nother thing. And a, a true Christian walks like Jesus walked. Jesus is the only perfect person to ever set foot on this earth. For, for God so loved the world, he saw all the evil that was going on in the world that instead of toasting us up like Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent Jesus Christ to take on the cross, to beat death, to send back down the Holy Spirit in us. That's that gut instinct. When, when you look to him, you're saved. When you repent and you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're saved. And People don't want to face that because people want to walk how they want to walk. They don't want to walk how Jesus walked because that's the, the humble approach. That's the the walking as, as that's being uh, shrewd and uh, sheep amid wolves because there's wolves lurking every day in society. Matthew 10, verse 16, Jesus said, when you find yourself as sheep amid wolves, be innocent, but shrewd. So when you face these arguments and, and arguments are good, dispute is good, uh, it's healthy. Disagreement is unavoidable, but division and being constantly uh, in, a, in a bash uh, bashing sort of state of mind and, and separating and segregating, that's always a choice. And when we disagree, we grow, we learn, we become enlightened on other people's experiences because everybody was dealt different cards. Everybody's came up through this life in a, in a different sort of way. And it looks different. And that's a beautiful thing. But just because we disagree on something doesn't mean we have to hate each other. It, it, quite the opposite. We can come together and find common ground. And ultimately, the goal is to find common ground and realize that we all bleed red. There's one race, there's a human race. And we all come from a creator and the goal should always be to get to heaven. The goal is to, to realize we have a creator, accept Jesus as your Lord and savior, because th th this all could be, could have been a race. God didn't have to allow us to walk on this earth again. After the flood, after, he didn't have to allow Noah to build that ark, to, to put all the animals and everything uh, of its kind into that ark with Noah. He could have just wiped us all clean. The dinosaurs, the cave, ev everything could have wiped it all clean, never gave us another chance, but he gave us Jesus. So why would I not put all my eggs in that basket? Why would I not strive uh, to live life with a purpose and to, to have eternal peace and salvation. Like, I don't understand why these people want to latch on to this, this way of thinking that there's no God, that there's no salvation, no heaven. Jesus wasn't resurrected. Like what, what, positivity lies in that. What sense of peace lies in that mentality? But as far as the interview is concerned, every time I listen to Jordan Peterson, I'm like a sponge. I'm soaking it up. Call me SpongeBob Gibson because anything he says is very advanced. It usually blows my mind. I'll probably have to go back and listen to it about 30,000 times to really calibrate it in my mind and make sense of it because he's a, a psychologist, one of the best, if not the most wisest people of our time. And I always come out having learned something new and I, I felt like my wisdom tank got a slight boost. I don't know about y'all. Y'all may be a lot 
more wise and smarter than I am, but the dude is absolutely brilliant on his toes, and I've yet to see anyone hold a candle to his perspective in a debate up until maybe this right here as far as like the way Sam spoke was very precise. It was very uh, knowledgeable, but it was with the wrong context. He didn't have the facts. He didn't have the the right view. In my personal opinion, y'all might have thought Sam, Sam absolutely obliterated this interview, but I personally think when Jordan broke his, his side of things down, he left Sam uh, Harris speechless. That's that's my side of things. Now, again, Jordan Peterson says he believes in God. I don't know if he's walking like he believes in God. I know he's he's came a long way and he, he has these biblical lectures and all that sort of stuff. I know he has his own uh, breakdown of, of what uh, a belief in God and Jesus Christ actually means. But is he walking that way? I don't know. That's between him and the Lord. Uh, I pray for him. I pray for Sam Harris that he finds the truth and the truth shall set you free always. So. I just, as far as that breakdown interview went, the audience to me was annoying. I didn't like that they were applauding for either of them in a partisan sort of way, uh, which interrupted it for me. But the way they both laid it out, respectable. And I think at the end of the day, we all need to think godly in an ungodly world. That's the only thing that's going to save society. Satan is blind in the minds of of these unbelievers and deceiving the believers. And that's the battlefield of, of our lives. What we think about can literally ruin or enable peace and godliness for our lives. So we need to start filling our mind with truth in the word of God daily, reading scripture, diving into it any chance you get and spreading the gospel. So listen to what Paul says in Colossians 4 verses 5 and 6. Conduct yourselves with wisdom towards outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. So you're going to come in contact with a whole lot of different folks across this, this, this lifetime. We're on the right side of the grass today. So every person you come in contact with is another chance for you as a Christian to, to plant some seeds, to garden. Gar- harvesting doesn't happen all in one day. you got to constantly be setting seeds and, and loving your neighbor and as, as though you love yourself. And you got to constantly be on guard because people are going to be like wolves and you're going to be the sheep amidst wolves, especially in this climate that we're living in. But you constantly got to be reminded that how Jesus would walk, that's what you should be striving towards. So whatever it may be, whatever argument you may get in, whatever thing happens in the world is worldly. You still got to look at it from a biblical lens and you still got to wrap it all into, into perspective and say, you know what, whatever this is, why, why ever it's, why, it ha- why it's happening. I don't know what the purpose is, but I know it's going to all be worked together for the greater good. So you're to love your neighbor. You're to be kind to them. You're to show them the truth. You point them on, on the direct path of the gospel. But if they don't pick up on that, that's between them and the Lord. It's not your job to to save people. That that comes down to God Almighty. It's your job to put them in the p- proper position to be saved. But if if they're not ready for it, then hey, they'll have to they'll have to face that judgment when when revelation hits, when when Jesus Christ comes back and them horns get to blowing. They'll have to they'll have to face that. But it's your job to put them them in a position to see the truth, to accept the truth, and ultimately to accept Jesus Christ as their savior. And it's up to them whether they say yes or no. Don't put that, don't put too much on your shoulders because at the end of the day, somebody being saved or not saved, that's between them and the Lord. But if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos. Share this video, get this out in front of society, allow them to think for themselves, at least so they can see what proper civil discourse and discussion looks like. Whether you agree or disagree with Jordan or Sam, doesn't really matter. Head over to my wife's Etsy store. She made this awesome He Is The Way shirt talking about Jesus Christ. Uh, Got a bunch of Christian apparel, a bunch of American apparel. Go show some love, get you some merch. Whether you get some or not, I appreciate your support, the love, just you allowing me to take over your screen for a few minutes. I'm grateful to have you here. All my other links are in the description section as well as the Etsy store as well. I love y'all. Until next time, I'm praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.